Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So, I was asked to make this shark pencil case. So, that's what I did. It has pencil, um, pencil, uh, pen, yeah, pencil crayons, not crayon crayons. It has pencil crayons, so it is long enough to hold pencil crayons inside of it. The picture I took, um, the picture shows the sticking out just for effect, right? But um, they do fit, so you're going to need to um, buy zippers unless you're going to use a button or, or something. But um, these are brand new pencil crayons. They're not, uh, they're not sharpened or shortened or anything. They're full size. So I used a pink one just to, you know, because it's a shark and that's in between his mouth. And the pencil crowns actually go to there. That's how far down they go. So let's jump right into this guy. So I'm going to use a 4.5 millimeter for this project. But we are going to start with gray. You're going to do a slip knot and you're going to chain three. You're going to do two single crochets, which is the only two stitches you have because the third one is still on your hook. So you're going to do two single crochets. You're going to chain one. It gives you a little triangle and you're going to you're going to turn. You got two stitches. You're going to put two single crochets in each of those two stitches, bringing you up to four stitches. Chain one, turn your work. In this first stitch, you're going to put two single crochets. So we're just increasing. These two next two are just going to be one single crochet each. So when on my pause screen, you'll see it written as a bracket and that just means the same space. And then you're going to do two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. I'm just going to get to zoom in a little bit closer. This next row, we're just going to do six single crochets. You should have six, six stitches. You're just going to put one single crochet in each of those. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to keep increasing. So two single crochets in the first stitch. And then do four single crochets across. two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. And now I just want you to do eight single crochets. So you should have eight stitches, so one in each. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to keep increasing, so two single crochets in the first stitch, six single crochets across, and then two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. Ten single crochets, so we're going to make this a pattern. One single crochet in each of those 10 stitches. Chain one, turn your work. This will be an increased row, so two single crochets in the first stitch eight single crochets across and 
into single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. And one single crochet in each stitch across from your next row. Chain one, turn your work. Increase row, two single crochets in the first stitch. You're gonna do, where am I? You're gonna do 10 stitches across. and then two single crochets in this stitch. And then I just want you to do 14 single crochets across, one in each stitch. Make sure you're getting into that turning over stitch every single time. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to do another increase row, so two single crochets in the first stitch. You're going to do 12 single crochets across and then two single crochets in the last stitch. And then I just want you to do 16 single crochets, one in each stitch all the way across. Chain one, turn your work. Two single crochets in the first stitch, 14 single crochets across, and two in the last stitch. So that's about as wide as we're going. So for the next 14 rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these 18 stitches. So if you've got a row counter, that'd be a great thing to have. 14 rows, well read my pause screen, 14 rows, 18 stitches, and I will see you on the other side. So this is my 14 rows. That's what it should look like. So we're going to start decreasing now. So you want you to chain one and turn your work. So you're going to see this written as SC2TOG, which means single crochet two together, which is just a decrease. You go into the first stitch, pull up a loop. You go into the next stitch, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull through all three. 
and then you're going to do 14 single crochets across That's my 14th stitch. You got two stitches left. You're going to decrease those two. So SC2 tog, first two and the last two stitches. You're going to chain one and turn your work. So just like we did in between our increases, we just did a regular row. That's what we're going to do in between our decreases. We're just going to do a regular row. So I just want you to do 16 single crochets, one in each stitch. That's my 16th, chain one, turn your work. And now we're going to decrease this row. So it's going to be the same thing. Do a decrease. And then do 12 single crochets to the other side. This is my 12th one, and you're going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. And now I want you to do 14 single crochets across. Now we're going to SC2 tog, first two. You're going to do 10 single crochets across. That's my 10th stitch, and then you're going to SC2 tog the last two. Chain one, turn your work. And now you're going to do 12 single crochets across, one in each stitch. You're going to SC two tug the first two. And you're going to do eight single crochets to the other side. And you're going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. And now you're going to do ten single crochets across. moving right along. So that's what it should look like so far. You're going to decrease the first two. Oops. And you're going to do six single crochets. And you're going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. And now I just want you to do eight single crochets across. Chain one, turn your work. Easy peasy. 
decrease the first two. And now do four single crochets. And decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. And now I just want you to do six single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. We're getting really small now. We're doing the nose, in case you're wondering why we're getting so tiny. You're going to decrease the first two. You're going to do two single crochets, and then you're going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. So, <laughs> you have four single crochets left at the top. And for the next two rows, I just want you to put one single crochet in each of those four stitches. Chain one, turn your work. So that's going to be where we fold our nose down to make it. So now we have to start increasing. And we're going to put two single crochets in the first stitch. We're going to do two single crochets. And we're going to put two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You should have six stitches. I just want you to put one single crochet in each of these six stitches. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to increase again. So two single crochets in the first stitch, four single crochets across. And then two single crochets in your last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You have eight stitches. You're going to do eight single crochets. Chain one. So I don't know if you did followed me for my slipper or not, but this is I did the same thing um, with this one. Is I folded it over to make the nose. Oh, sorry, I folded it over to make the nose. So that's what we're building right now, in case you're wondering. So we're gonna increase. Turn my work. We're gonna do another increase. So two single crochets in this stitch. Six single crochets across. And then two single crochets in this last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You should have ten stitches, and I just want you to put one single crochet in each of those ten stitches. Chain one, turn your work. One more increase, two single crochets in the first stitch, eight single crochets across. And two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You should have 12 stitches. You're going to put one single crochet in each of those 12 stitches. So, you should have what looks like a fish right now. It's always an easy way to do a shark, anything, slipper or anything. It looks like a fish. 
Now with the shark slipper, I added the white was sewn, was crocheted into it. This one I decided to do it differently because I need a diff I just needed to do it differently. Um, so yeah, should look like a fish right now. This is what you should have. You're gonna fasten off, and um, you need to have a sewing tail because we're gonna fold this over like that. And you're going to sew up this side, down this side. You're going to leave this open. But we're not going to do that right now. But have enough to do up both sides. We're just going to kind of shimmy across. That's how we're going to do it. So not a whole lot of sewing tail, but you do need a sewing tail. You can actually, we can do this right now. It doesn't really matter. Less things to do later, I suppose. I probably have way too much of a tail, which I always have too much of a tail. So I'm just going to do a regular whip stitch. I'm not being all fancy about this. It's just a, it's just a shark nose. So keep it really close to the top. Like don't go deep with your stitch. You don't need to. So once you're at the top, you're never going to see the underside of this. So you can just go through the top like that. No one's ever going to know. This is the nose, so. So like I said, we're not sewing across here. Leave that open. So we just need to make a knot so you can come up and go through your loop. Pull back and forth. That tightens that knot right down there. So don't judge my sewing. I did not fold that down properly, but Hopefully your sewing's better. You can probably weave this in while we're here. I imagine it can be sewn in later. It's no big deal, but. This will let you know too what the inside is for later when we go to sew it together because this is gonna be the inside. That's gonna be the outside, so. Um, I would leave that actually hanging just so you know that that's the inside where the flappy part is. Let's get your white. Mine is not worse. Mine is four weight, but it's, it's really, it's a lot thinner than my gray. A lot thinner. So I'm not happy about that, but I don't have any bigger white, any thicker white. So make a slip knot. And I didn't when I made when I made this guy. I didn't have any worsted or anything, so it all worked out fine. You're gonna chain three, and you're gonna do two single crochets. So almost kind of the same pattern as the one we just did, but not really. Chain one, turn your work. So we're going to start increasing the same way. You're going to do two single crochets in this stitch. You only have two stitches and then two single crochets in the next stitch. Chain one, turn your work. Let me see if I can come in a little closer. Get my stuff out of the way. So this round you're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch. You're going to do two single crochets across and then two single crochets in this last turning over stitch. So make sure you're getting through both loops. Chain one, turn your work. You're going to do six single crochets. You should have six stitches. So you're going to do one in each stitch. Chain 
chain one, turn your work. You're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch. You're going to do four single crochets across. And then two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You have eight single crochets. You're going to put one single crochet in each of those. Chain one, turn your work. Sometimes that uh, last turning over stitch can be a pain in the butt. You're going to do two single crochets in the first stitch. You're going to do six single crochets across. And you're going to do two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. You have ten stitches, you're going to put one single crochet in each of those. I am doing a tight turning over stitch. Chain one, turn your work. I tried to make that a little looser. Two single crochets in the first stitch, eight single crochets across. And two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one. Turn your work. So your next round is going to be just 12 single crochets. Chain one, turn your work. We're going to Keep increasing, so two single crochets in the first stitch, ten single crochets across. And two single crochets in the last stitch. Chain one, turn your work. So, for the next 18 rows, you're going to do one single crochet in each of these 14 stitches. And I will see you. Oh, and I want you to put markers on this row. So when you're done your 18th row, put a marker on each end of it. And I will see you on the other side. This is my 18 rows, so this is what you should have. I need you to mark this row doesn't really matter what color markers you use just mark this row because you're gonna need it later for sewing this guy together and from here you can do four more rows of 14 single crochets So my four rows is done. We're going to start decreasing now, so chain one and turn your work. We're going to decrease the first two. 
you're going to do 10 single crochets and decrease the last two. So we're not doing the same as we did with the um, the other part of this. We're going to decrease, decrease, decrease. So we're going to decrease again. We're going to do six single crochets. Or eight single crochets. Six. That would be the next row. Eight single crochets. Decrease, chain one, turn your work. You're going to decrease the first two. You're going to do six single crochets. And then you're going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. One more, well, not one more, but decrease first two. You're going to do four single crochets. And you're going to decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. And this row, you should have six stitches. So this row is just going to be one single crochet in each of those six stitches. Chain one, turn your work. You're gonna decrease the first two, SC2 tog. You're gonna do two single crochets. And you're gonna decrease the last two. Chain one, turn your work. You've got four stitches. You're just gonna do four single crochets. And you're going to fasten off. So just fasten off normally and tuck this guy in. So again, decide which is the front, which is the back. And then you might want to consider leaving him out so you know what's the front and the back. Even though we're going to get started right away. So I'm just going to leave a little piece kind of hanging out. So your markers are right up here. So with this down you're going to put the two ends together. What you're going to do is you're going to sew and yes, they one is way smaller than the other. That's the way it's supposed to be. Cuz we needed that space for the for the crayons or the uh, pencil pencil crayons. You're going to sew up to the marker. So you're going to sew up here till you get Oh, I lost more. Oh, there it is. So you're going to sew all along up here till you get to a marker, and then you're going to sew all along up here till you get to the marker. Doesn't matter what color you use um, for your sewing. I'm just going to use gray. Um, this is a way thicker, way thicker. Um, yarn. I'm going to make a slip knot on one end and the other end. Is going to get threaded. 
So, I'm going to go in where my marker is, here, and I'm going to grab, let's make sure my tail is even before I grab any. So your tail needs to match up. So make sure that matches up. So that's where my marker was. So I'm just going to go in and I'm going to grab some of this. And when I pull through, I'm going to stop and I'm going to go through my loop. And this will tighten up. I like to do an extra knot right here just for safety purposes. That's all going to get tucked in and nobody's going to see it. So I want you to, to whip stitch all the way across till you get to the other marker. So I don't know if you guys know what um, mattress stitch is, but you can do the same thing with a mattress stitch. You can, as you can with the whip stitch, is you can choose to pull it tight after you've put so many stitches in. So if you got really long, I don't know if you can see that as far as I can zoom, but see how loose mine is? So I can do a few stitches like that. So just stay at the very tippy edge, the tippy edge. The reason the gray is bigger, oops, I pulled too tight. I'm just trying to show you something. The reason the gray is bigger than the um, white is so that you get that concave, so you've got all the space to just jam in. Um, that shark I showed you is actually holding two packages from the dollar store, two packages of pencil crowns. So when you get a few stitches in, you can pull this like a mattress stitch, and it'll close up so tight that you're not going to really notice the gray if you're using it. So. That's what I do. I don't try to pull tight as I go. I just pull tight after I put a few stitches in. So just work away at sewing up your, your guy. So I'm just about to my other marker. So just make sure it is going to be even. We all know I can't sew very well. I think that's pretty close. So I'm going to go through my loop to make a knot. So I'm just going to cut some of this off for weaving because I got still way too much. Those should just about meet and they should be just about the same sides from here up just about not entirely because this is the bottom jaw so it's going to be a little bit different but um, this gives you plenty of room in here like I said mine holds um like two packages from the dollar store of crayons actually it was over two packages because what I have in here is one package of the thinner just the one thin box the long and then the other package is three quarters of a double pack so it's actually more than two packs that fit in there so it's pretty big um, area so with gray get your gray out again we need to reconnect and we're gonna crochet around the jaw so you're gonna make a slip knot so 
we're gonna crochet around up and down so attach right down here at the corner of the mouth and just attach with a single crochet we're just using single crochets, but I want you to put another single crochet into that same space. We, this is a raw edge. There's no stitches. So you're just going to have to get your hook in there. And I can't give you numbers because I don't know where you're sticking your hook. But just do one single crochet around wherever you can get your hook in. Up here you got stitches, so just follow along. You got four, I think, yeah, four up here. And then you're back to just creating them wherever you get your hook is stuck in. Try to at least mimic the other side that you just did. And don't get carried away. We're coming up to this nose and there's something different we have to do. So don't work ahead of me. So. Pop over to the corner. Through the corner. You're going to keep doing your raw edge single crochet. Make sure I'm on camera. So when we get to the nose part, you're going to do, let me show you, it's hard to explain it. We're kind of upside down. <laughs> so when we do the teeth, so I crocheted into the back loops all along which is technically the front loop. So if you were to hold, if you were holding it the right way around, it would be the back loop. But for us, it's the front loop. <laughs> so holding it the way we have it, we're going to go into the front loops. Let me try to turn it so you can actually see the stitches. So these are our V's. Let me raise this up. To get closer to you. So this is the way we're holding it. And I want you to go into these loops. The ones right at the front. Not the back ones. We're going to put teeth into those back ones. The white teeth. So you'll see it as front loop only. So once you're back around, I sewed mine crooked, so I've got a couple of stitches before I get to the corner. You can slip stitch to that first stitch that you did. And fasten off. So these two where your start and your stop points, though, though that can get tied together just for added security. A super duper tight double knot and then you can weave that in. You'll never see that little knot that you just did. So with our white, so we gotta make some teeth now. So now we did front loops only. So if you roll it over, you're gonna see your back loops and that's what we're going to do teeth into so that he has an upper lip. 
that's the method to my madness. So there's all the back loops. But we're going to start down here in the corner with our white. Okay, so we're going to do our teeth. So I want you to make a slip knot. And we're going to be putting these in the back loops only. And if you don't want to, if you want to use the whole stitch, knock your socks out. I'm putting mine in the back loops. But I'm going to first skip two, three, four, five stitches, go into the lock, well, go into the fifth stitch. So we don't want to start our mouth right away. And you can attach with a single crochet and put another single crochet. And you can also put a half double crochet, chain two, and pico. So pico, from your chain two, you're going to go into these two stitches. They're sideways stitches, but that's what a pico is. So it puts a point on something so after your chain two just come down and find your two sideway bars and you can slip stitch that's a pico so it puts a point on the end of something and then in the same stitch you can do another half double crochet and a single so that's one tooth we're going to skip two spaces and do it again in this back loop. So you're going to do a single crochet, you're going to do a half double crochet. So this half double has three bars. One, two, and three. That's what you just pulled through for a half double. When you do your chain two, you're going to come down and go through those two bars from your half double. That's where you're going to go into. So chain two and then pico. So these are the two bars from your half double and you're going to slip stitch. And then you're going to do a half double and a single. And that's going to be your re repeat. Skip two, single crochet, half double crochet, chain two, find the two bars from your half double slip stitch, half double, single crochet. So the pico can be quite difficult for people that aren't used to it. And I don't know if I've done it a whole lot on my channel, but that's the best way I can find to describe how to do it. So I'm going to put the repeat that you got to do um, up on my board, but stop at the nose. Don't work ahead of me and I'm going to show you what we do up at the nose area. So my pause, my pause screen will go up, but we're going to come back. So, we did front loops only, so when you roll this back, you're going to see the back loops right here from when you did the front loop. So you're going to have this much space because we worked in the front loops the last time. So these little back bars is what we need to go into. You could probably see it easier on yours. So I'm at a spot where I'm going to skip two. So this is this space here, which there's a bar right there. It's just going to be a tight one. There's a bar right there. So I'm going to go into this second bar. Oh, sorry, I'm going to skip two. So I'm going to go into the third bar. And I'm going to do my, my regular chain two pico.
So we're not changing what we're doing, we're just changing where we're doing it. So once you skip two, skip this corner and that's two. So your last one will be here. So it may seem a little squishy on this end, but once the, um, once the, um, we sew on the zipper, you probably won't even notice it. So right here is where we attached. I just want you to go to the top of, so there's our, where we attached and then our one single crochet that we did. So I go into that one single crochet that we did and slip stitch and fasten off. So I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna squiggle my way down to that other one where we join, and I'm gonna do a double knot, a very tight double knot. And then I'm gonna weave from there. We did a double knot, so you don't really need to go that far. So if you don't want this many teeth, you just need to skip more spaces. Not everybody likes all the ganglies. So your zipper gets sewn in all along under here. So under the teeth is where your zipper gets sewn in. So then it, your nose sticks up like that. It looks better once it's full. It looks funny now because it's got nothing in it, but So the eyes, um, I think I used 14, let me get my eyes, I think I used 14 inch eyes for mine. They're really far apart. Um, but technically, one, two, three, around the f between the fourth and fifth stitches on either side. You can tell by the nose. It's hard to it's hard to show you in there. But I'm pretty sure my eyes are 14 inches. Oh, maybe not quite that big. These ones might be 12. I'm just going to do 14 for this guy. So his are 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. Between the, tw the 12th and the 13th row. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Doing the 12th and the 13th row from here. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12. And then so 12 and 13. That's where that I put those. 12. So in here. One, two, three, four. So these eyes are going to be really big on this shark, but that's okay. So let's get started making his fins. Next. So, for first, we're going to make the uh, side fins, the two side fins. So, you're going to do a magic ring. The magic rings I do have an automatic 
chain one so you don't have to worry about it. You're going to put six single crochets inside this ring. That's my six, so pull on your little thingy my bobber. So, let me get closer. Um, you're gonna need a stitch marker. We're not we're not slip stitching or chaining. It's gonna be amigurumi. So you're gonna do one single crochet and an increase. So that's my one single crochet. Then your next stitch is going to get the increase. I'm just going to weave my tail in as I go. So the increase is two single crochets in the same space and repeat. One single crochet, two single crochets. Boy, I got two left hands right now. I don't like sewing in my end and I don't like it just hanging there so I'm gonna just weave it in till I come back around so your last stitch to have two single crochets in it so pull on that tighten my stuff your next round is gonna be two different stitches so you're going to do five single crochets and then you're going to do four half doubles. So that's number one. That's five single crochets and now you're going to do four half doubles. flip that around. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So that's number one. That's number two and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. You should have 12 stitches, so your next round is going to be six single crochets and six half double crochets. And now you're going to do six half double crochets. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase. That's four single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. The next two rounds, shove 18 stitches. 
The next two rounds, you're going to do nine single crochets and nine half doubles. That's nine single crochets and then nine half doubles. You're going to do that for two rows. So your next two rounds are going to be one single crochet in each stitch, just a single, and then you can fasten off. We're all done. You'll have to make another one of these. I'll put my pattern on the screen, but let's finish this one together first. So I'm done my two rows. I'm going to fasten off the sewing tail. So do you see how it curves this way? That is what we needed. So let's get this whip stitch shut. So I need to have it folded like this, but obviously I can't whip stitch yet. So I just got to backtrack a couple of stitches, a few stitches into this stitch. And then I can whip stitch. So, this has to be sewn on so that the curve curves away. Just trying to see where that, uh, maybe like a row away from the mouth, but it has to be sewn on so it curves away from the head, just like all the other ones. Um, so go ahead. I'm gonna put my pattern up for my for for this guy, so you can make your second one, and then go ahead and get them sewn on. However, you want to sew them on. Um, I don't give sewing lessons very well because they don't sew very well. And then when we come back, we'll do the dorsal fin. So I got both mine sewn on. I think they're pretty even, but it's tough to tell. Let's do this dorsal pit, dorsal fin, dorsal fin next. So we're gonna make a magic ring of six single crochets. You're going to do one single crochet in each of these six stitches. So this is another way to get a point on the end of something. I'm just going to flip this around just to make my life easier.
So your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. That's my one single crochet and then my next stitch gets the increase of two single crochets in the same space and repeat. So the point of this puts a longer point on the top, if that makes sense to you. And now I just want you to do one single crochet in each of these nine stitches. Still just weaving in my tail. It's easier to do it this way over the next couple of rows than it is to do the other way. So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase and this is going to bring you up to 12 stitches. That's number one, that's number two, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. Your next round <laughs> is going to be a little bit different. We're going to do an increase plus we're going to do two different stitches. So get your stitch marker in there. That's stitch number one. It's a single crochet. You're going to do three single crochets. So that's number one. That's three single crochets. And then you're going to do your increase in single crochets. So two single crochets in this next stitch. Then you're going to do two single crochets and then you're going to do a half double. Then in your next stitch you're going to do two half doubles in the same space. So you'll see it written with a bracket. That means the same space on my channel. Then you're going to do three half doubles. And then the last stitch gets two half doubles in the same space. You should have 15 stitches. Your next round, you're going to do four singles. So that's number one. This next stitch is going to get two singles in the same space. Then you're going to do three singles, one in each, and a half double in the next stitch. The next stitch is going to get two half doubles in the same space. Then you're going to do four half doubles. Your last stitch is going to get two double or two half doubles in the same space. You should have 18 stitches. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. All singles, all single crochets. That's number one. That's five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. For the next 
next two rows, you should have 21 stitches. The next two rows, you're just going to put one single crochet in each of these 21 stitches. And I will see you on the other side. So I've come back around and just fasten off with a sewing tail. So I sewed mine open. I didn't whip stitch this. So I'm going to go in backwards into this next stitch and I'm going to pull this through. Because that's what I like to do when I sew mine on. So again, the curve has to go away from the head. And I did it about three, four divots, counting the divot the eyes are in, two, four, six rows and then you've got that other divot so where the lines are making sure it's in the middle So I've got my everything done. We got to do the tail fin. So I did the tail fin a little bit differently than you'd think. Normally you would think this would be all one piece. Well, it's not. So the tail fin of shark, the top part is bigger than the bottom part. I don't know if anyone's ever noticed that. It's not all sharks. It's only some sharks. This type of shark has a smaller lower half than it does an upper half. So I made them two completely separate pieces, two completely different sizes. The reason I did that is because when you make this all one piece and then you try to sew it to this, it's not very stable at all. And I just felt like it just moved around too much and it just was not a stable thing. So. I took these and then when I was whip stitching them together I left a little gap and I literally put it on the tail and then I sewed through. So that's why the tail looks like this. But this tail is never coming off and it, you can move it around and bang it around as much as you want. It's never coming off. The other one I wasn't so sure about that. So the only thing wrong I did with the tail was both of these pieces this dips in like that, it's supposed to go out. So I put this one on backwards when I sew them together. I didn't sew them together, so both pieces were out like that. So that's why it looks funny. But we'll fix that for this shark. So we are making two pieces. They're going to be completely different sizes. So the first one's going to start with a magic ring and six single crochets. I'm going to zoom back in. So pull your ring shut and I just want you for round number two, if I can get my lead, you're just going to put one single crochet in each stitch around for six stitches. So you can use your marker here if you want, but I'm just going to count to six. This is number six. So I'm going to flip it around. Make sure my middle's pulled as tight as I can pull it because I'm going to be weaving it in this next round. I don't generally do that, but I don't really want this. I mean, kids are going to be bashing this poor pencil case around, so 
Your next round is going to be one single crochet and an increase. And if this seems familiar to you, it's because that's our last, kind of like we did our last um, fin. So I would use a stitch marker in this case. So that's one single crochet and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat again. This should be done three times. You should get around three times. One single crochet, two single crochets. I'm stuck. I said this was worsted, but at the beginning of the video, I'm pretty sure I corrected myself as not worsted, but it, um, it's very big. So I'm just going to snip the, my middle off here because I weaved it around once. I'm pretty sure I'm fine. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and then four single half doubles. So very close to being like the other one, like this one is actually close. That's five single crochets and then four half doubles. Your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 12 stitches. That's number one. That's number two, and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So your next round is going to be six single crochets and six half doubles. So we have 12 stitches. That's my six single crochets and now I'm going to do six half doubles. Your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. That's number one. That's my three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. So I should have 15 stitches. Your next round is going to be eight single crochets and seven half doubles. Your next round is going to be four single crochets and an increase, and this will bring you up to 18 stitches. The reason I chose to do all my increases in single crochets and not both of them like the the rows in between is because when you do a round of single crochets on top of a split round it helps the curve 
So that's why I did that. Your next round is going to be nine single crochets and nine half doubles since we have 18 stitches. Still increasing. Your next round is going to be five single crochets and an increase. So we're getting quite the slanty on this. And that's number one. That's five single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets in the same space. And repeat. Just about done. So it's hard to see the twist in it until we go to put the two pieces together. Um, you should have 21 stitches, so our next round oh, is going to be 11 single crochets and 11 half doubles. Excuse me, I am tired. It is 11 18 at night. That's number one. That's my 11 singles. I'm going to do 11 half doubles. No, I'm going to do 10 half doubles. All right. So because this is really slanted, when you do your last round, it's just going to be one single crochet in each stitch. We're not increasing, we're finishing it. So just one single crochet in each of the um, 21 stitches you have. But right here, to match the height of that, I want you to do extended stitches just so when you sew the two ends together, it's not so slopey slanty. So what I mean by extended stitches is you're going to go into your stitch, you're going to pull up a loop, and then you're going to pull up so that it matches. Then you're going to yarn over and pull through. So you're doing extra long stitches. Pull up. So you'll see this sometimes written in magazines and stuff like that with special stitches as ESC. And that's all it stands for, is extended single crochet. You can do extended any stitch, half double, half triple. So you only need to do it for a little while. So when you put it together, you can see how just the three singles is now even to this back part where the half doubles is. So therefore, by the time you're done your row, so of course when you come around here, you don't need to do extended anymore. You can just do regular ones. So the extended stitches, really, I think I'm done. I did three, and that's all pretty even now. So I'm going to hold it properly. I mean, that's a little, I could probably do a little bit bigger ones, but I don't think I need to extend them that far. And that was just three stitches, so... It's just a suggestion. I mean, you don't have to, but when you sew the two ends together, you're going to have, it's going to be a little wonky. So I'm not pulling up as much, but I'm still pulling up. And now I'm just not going to do it at all because now I'm into the half doubles. So I'm going to do the same thing at the end of my other piece that we, we haven't started yet, but we're going to get to. Oh God, I think I have a knot coming. Thank God I'm done. Yep, there's my knot. All right. So last stitch, you can fasten off and we'll make our other end. Ha, 
<laughs> I have not. That I've purposely made. So only one of these needs a sewing tail. So that's um put it back in a shape. So I think my extended stitches could have probably been a little bit higher right there to match this, but close enough. Moving on to the next piece. Here to make a magic ring of six single crochets. Oh, I got a knot there too. That's that's not my knot, that's from the manufacturer. I hate when that happens. So your next round is going to be one single crochet in each stitch. So I'm just going to count to six. This is my sixth stitch. So I'm going to flip this around. And I'm going to pull this so my little circle closes. We are going to instantly jump into the two different stitches. And I want you to weave in as you go. So, tricky, tricky. We're going to do three single crochets and three half doubles. I'm just snipping my tail off. So now we're going to do an increase row. We're going to do one single crochet increase. I was talking with that in my mouth. So that's your one single crochet and then we're going to do our increase of two single crochets in the same space. So you're going to have nine stitches when you're done, if that helps you count. So your next round is going to be five single crochets and then four half doubles. So, you can see it instantly turning. Oh, not so much in the camera, but... So your next round is going to be two single crochets and an increase. So because you have 12 stitches, we're going to do six single crochets and then six half double crochets.
There we go. So it's got a little bit of a turn on it. So your next round is going to be three single crochets and an increase. This brings you up to 15 stitches. That's three single crochets and then your increase of two single crochets. So we have 15 stitches after that last row where the camera just shut off in the middle of what I was doing and talking. So I want you to do eight single crochets and seven half doubles. And your last row, believe it or not, is an increase row. So you're going to do four single crochets and an increase. So again, do extended stitches till that's even up here. So it's the same concept. That's my first one. So that's my fourth extended stitch. I'd say that's pretty good. Actually, it might be a little tall. So I'm just gonna just do little extensions till I get into the half doubles, which is over here. So one of them has 18 stitches and one of them has 21 stitches and that's okay because of what we're doing by putting it on the um, shark's tail. So you can fasten off. I know everyone's like this doesn't make sense. There's two different numbers. How are we supposed to sew them together? Trust me. Because we don't sew them all the way together. The rest only part of it gets sewn. Three quarters of it gets sewn together and then the rest of it gets sewn onto the um, onto the shark's butt. So I'm just pulling this forward. As far as um, this guy goes, you only need a sewing tail for one of these. So I'm just going to pull him through and then just shove him down there. Um, I used no stuffing for any of these, but you're if you feel that you need to do that. So don't be like what I did. The, the last shark I made, shark pencil case I made. Um, so <laughs> these fins are supposed to be in the going in the same direction. So away and away, like that. And then because the size difference, let me get my other shark. You're going to sew it three quarters of the way around, which puts that there. Do you see what I mean? And then this goes on here. It's hard to explain. We're going to have to do it. But trust me, it's okay. Just make sure that these are facing the same direction. You get what I'm saying? So they should come together where the points like this because that's the outside. Nobody's really going to see. So I'm just going to come in and I suck at sewing so if you have a better way of doing this I'm sure you can probably figure it out. You don't have to listen to what I'm telling you to do. So mine's just laid on my table. I'm just going to come in and I'm just going to do a whip stitch. So a whip stitch generally is front loop to front loop or back loop to back loop or however you want to do it. And that's because of the look it gives. So if you could just try to do that. So just use the front loops to bring your pieces together. Now I didn't do it for the very first stitch I did because I just 
wanted to make sure it was going to hold all right so I'm just coming across pulling snugly going stitch for stitch I know this seems probably really really weird oops now if you want to get the whole stitch while you're sewing you, you don't need to listen to me these are only suggestions that I make. They're not they're not orders. I'm not barking out orders. So I've got one more on this side. I'm gonna go all the way around before I sew it to the so I just want to make sure I pull all my stitches nice and tight. And then I just literally flip it over. But I'm going to go from here to there at this point. You just got to make sure that you're even. So again, I know it's a, it's a funny way to make a tail, but I'm just trying to um, make sure it gets put on here and it's secure for the kitties. So I am back around. I'm just going to do one more stitch just to make sure it's nice and closed up. I want to put a small little weed knot right here that no one's ever going to see because I'm going to go right back into it and I'm going to pop around over here to the edge to start sewing so when I pull on that it sucked that knot down right there so nobody sees it so now all I want to do is come back the top goes on the top or the big one goes on the top and the bottom one goes on the bottom because the sharks a shark's tail is um, that's just how it is so I go right into the tail and then into the bottom piece just make sure you're going stitch for stitch still which is hard when one is bigger than the other I get that so it can be done though I'm gonna go up into it and up into the next stitch And this hold is much better hold than building the tail in one round. So here, I got nowhere to go. I don't have the bottom part of the tail over on this side. I'm going to go in and out filling those stitches at the front and then I'm going to come back over here and do this side now it might be a little hard to start your one down here it certainly is not easy to sew on but at the same time it uh, is certainly worth it in the end so again I'm just coming up through the bum into my oh into the right stitch God my cat is loud when he walks down a flight of stairs 
So I'm just right on the edge of the tippy edge of this tail to get my last stitch in here. So just make sure you've got all your pieces covered. And this is what it ends up looking like. So again, I know that looks strange, but when it's all together, actually, just between you and I, nobody's noticed mine being like that. Nobody has said, what the heck is going on here? Because, well, I mean, if you just did it, you can see your own. It's really not that noticeable. Like once the pencil crayons and everything are in it, you probably never noticed that in the picture and you probably never noticed that's backwards either until I pointed it out. So it's just an easier way to get the tail that you should get with the smaller one being on the bottom like a shark's fin. So you could do that for a whale too. The last shark that I did that had a tail fin, I never did that. And I always, it always kind of bugged me because I like to, make things look like they should look you know what I mean like if I'm gonna make a shark it has to look like a shark anyway I'm just gonna put a small little knot here this tail's never coming off by the way the way we did it any kid could try to pull this tail off and it's not coming off weave oh, it's kind of a tight spot to weave into so when I pull it pulls that knot right down so nobody will see it I don't think my tail is quite in the middle so I'm just gonna go down I don't want to really want to go far with this weaving because there's gonna be pencil crayons in there So there we go, that's why I made the shark tail the way I made the shark tail. So, I you know it's super duper weird to you, but it made sense in my head and it made sense when I did it. And it really doesn't look that bad if you sew it properly. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not a good sewer, so it certainly does look better than my last one. But at least it's all going the same direction <laughs> this time. So, last but not least, I'm going to lose all my stuff. So we're done. Everything in the shark, except for um, sewing our zipper on. I'm probably just going to use pink again. But I got these uh, 20 assorted, oh sorry, no, 20 assorted colors but a hundred piece of nylon um, zippers in this in a bag from Amazon. Oh gosh, I think it was only like um, fifteen dollars or something like that that I got a hundred pieces. So I mean that's pennies, right? So and it is a of ton of colors. I've used quite a bit out of the bag, but um, it's got a ton of colors. Red was not one of them, so that's another reason I decided to go with pink. So get your zipper, and get your thread if you're using thread, and I'll see you in a second. So, um, this goes on, kind of got to fold your nose back. Open your zipper. So this will go on right below his teeth and around. And of course this guy goes around like that. So, um, it is not the easiest thing to sew into place. And to be quite honest, um, so with my sewing kit, I get these little clamps. 
and because I suck at sewing, I've got to use them. But you can use pins, but I'm using clamps. I'm going to tell you why in a second. I keep, I keep delaying the process of telling you, but I am using clamps because I like to use glue and sew. And the reason for that is because I suck at sewing. So I'm just making sure I got all this in the right space with my clamps. So that obviously is going to overhang a little bit. I tried to make the shark big enough. I didn't want to really want to go too, too, too big. And then I'm going to clamp the bottom of this. But in the meantime, I'm just going to pin it because I just want to let's get away from this here. I'm just going to pin it because I just uh, want it to be out of my way. So this is what it will look like. I mean, my other one looks a little funny. I mean, have to redo everything, but this one turned out okay. This one turned out fine. So, oh, my zipper got stuck. So it holds quite a few pencil crayons. As you can see, it's like a box and a half. So it holds quite a bit. So anyway. Thanks for joining me, guys. <laughs> Super mean with the nose up. Anyway, thanks for joining me, guys. I actually had a lot of fun doing this one. I'll see you in the next video.